All right. Thanks so much. One more dance and we'll go home. And time to take a look at the newspapers this morning. Uh, the time says uh, uh, eight government agencies are hot because uh, the PPA, the Public Procurement Authority, has hauled them before Iyoko. They are to face prosecution. They find that local banks will become stronger after Bank of Ghana's cleanup of the financial sector. That's the president. NDC hopes dashed over $2 billion uh, Chinese deal. Daily Guide has that story. And uh, the rot at the ports, CTN exposes, we are told $14.4 million lost in July. The uh, photograph of the Commission of Customs, Mr. Axie Krentel on the paper. This morning, we'll take a look at some of the issues, particularly with the, uh, what we're getting from China. My guest this morning is a member of the NPP team, Kamar Dean Abdullahi. Good morning. Good morning. And hope you're doing great. Um, very, very, very well. Mm -hmm. um, let me say once again, very good morning to the viewers of um, TV3 mm -hmm. and also good morning to the great members of the great party, right. New Patriotic Party. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing a good job. Um, we should be thanking the President of the Republic of Ghana for indeed promising what he calls good governance mm. and delivering Deliver. what actually is good governance. Um, wherever he is this morning, from China to Rwanda, we'll say we wish him well. And we know he's going to be home safely and he's going to continue in the deliverance of the good governance that we expect. Inshallah. Grateful. He's a member of the MPP's communication team. Uh, come on, even before we jump into the newspapers, it, 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 the, there are indications that the NPP has appointed uh, uh, the member of parliament for the Adentan constituency, yourself and a few others, to, to now hold together the communication wing of the party. Is that the case? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I don't know where you're getting this news. Right? Mm. Um, yes, after elections, um, elected officers, if you like, um, and council of elders, as well as the national council members or na na national executive committee members, would have to sit down. I mean, but primarily, it's a national executive committee that was sat down um, to say that, look, we need to beef up the staff strength of the party. Therefore, we are mandated to do certain appointments. Mm. And we have outfits like the Directorate of Strategy. We have outfits like the Directorate of Election. We have outfits, uh, outfits like the Directorate of uh, Communication. communication right. While we have other deputies to the elected officers. This, to the best of my knowledge, has not been done yet. Mm. So I don't know where you are getting your information from. Um, nonetheless, it is and will continue to be a call to save agenda. Okay. We have subscribed to a great party. We will never regret being there. And we will always ensure that whatever we will do to put the party in good, I mean, in good light out there would be our hallmark. I'm grateful. We'll wait and see what the party uh, so, so to answer your question, I think I think okay. it's from the grapevine, okay. and we cannot, we cannot. Right. There's not, there's no we, nothing we, like that. We we'll wait and see the party decision on yeah. that. But let's go to the Ghanaian Times this morning. Uh, on the front page is that uh, headline. On page four is a story. Eight agencies, government agencies, are hot. PPA, that's the Procurement Authority, has hauled them before Yoko to face prosecution. The story uh, by Abigail Arnold says that eight government agencies have been hauled before uh, Yoko for procurement infractions. Uh, this is according to the Public Procurement Authority. Uh, ten more are currently being audited by the authority to co reconcile procurement processes with awarded contracts to ensure there was value for money. So uh, the eight are the Ministries of Education and Energy, Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, University of Education, Winneba, Accra Metro Assembly, and the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital. Others are the Northern Electricity Development Company, uh, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Temao Refinery, and the Controller and Accountant General's Department. Uh, Chief Executive Mr. Ajin uh, Mbwating made the disclosure uh, he said that the audit reports of the eight agencies have been lodged with the office of um, the Attorney General and Yoko for further investigations. Come on, let's start from here. PPA getting uh, or beefing up the fight against corruption, is that, is that how you see it? You see, I, I started off by saying that we have had a president who's shown commitment to rule of law, who's shown commitment to ensuring that sanity prevails 
within our fold, mm. especially when it comes to the procurement sector. I mean, the last time I checked, the president had calls to appoint a minister in charge of procurement, mm. which indeed did not or wasn't seen hitherto. If I'm right, maybe I stand to be corrected. I'm not, I'm not sure we've ever well, had the, the a were, minister There were questions as to exactly what a role... No, was. but there's a role. Mm. That is why we need a watchdog role. You see, we have had a country where many have always argued that all the fine laws, all the fine regulations are enshrined in our law books. But yet, execution is a problem. Today, I am happy that the President of the Republic promised that, look, I will do whatever I can within my capacity mm. to nip corruption in the bud. And he came and said, that, look, the sector which we see as porous, the sector which we see as people use, using as a dodgy area, is the tendering process, if you like, the procurement process within our governance fold. Therefore, let me have a minister to deal with the procurement authority mm. to deal with the procurement sector, then we can move on. I have, I'm not surprised that today, Yoko, we are told also, uh, is that right? Yeah, yes, eight government agencies. Eight government uh, agencies uh, are hauled before Yoko, mm. you understand, for possible investigation, and if you like, if a, a culpability is established, prosecution would then follow. I'm not surprised that it's happening. It is the environment we have created to ensure that sanity prevails, to ensure that we nip corruption in the bad, to ensure that procurement laws are followed. This tells you that the corruption promise we gave, that we're going to clamp down on corruption, we're going to fight it out and make sure the right thing is done, we will do that. Look, it has a history. First of all, the Procurement Act was passed by which government again? Again, I'm not being political, but it was under His Excellency John Ajakum Kufuor that we got the Procurement Act. Okay? He that told it was like anybody can just sit down and say, look, I want to give a contract to whoever I want to give to. Mm. But we needed a procedure put in place. Again, when MPP came to power, MPP thought and said, look, let us sanitize the system. They did that. Nanado has come this time round after eight years of bad governance, of misrule, eight years of nepotism, eight years of corruption. Nanado came and said, look, that procurement sector is a bit sick. Let me have a minister. Let's look at it again and we move. I'm not surprised that eight institutions are um, actually hauled before Iyoko for investigation and possible prosecution to go on. It serves as a deterrent to other institutions who are watching. It serves as a deterrent to other uh, people who are watching that, look, procurement procedure must never be reneged upon. Procurement procedure must be followed so that at the end of the day, we will all not full short change as a nation. What about the argument by some that there are certain contracts that uh, people have spoken about, Kelly, GVG, and the others that they've been they've been done under sole sourcing, and and civil society has raised concerns, but uh, the PPA has not doesn't seem to to support civil society's argument. Well, nature nature of the contract. Whatever contract it is, we have had cause to argue that why should we have sole sourcing being used in some other country when we're in opposition. Mm. Similarly, if we come to power and at the end of the day there has been a sole source, sole source, if you like, um, procedure mm. used for a particular contract. But question and fundamentally, the question is, do we have sole sourcing rule or law sitting in our book as well? Yes, we do. Do we have principles established why one should go or resort to sole sourcing. Mm -hmm. If we do have, please, those who are raising those red flags, they should bring, with the uh, greatest of respect, sense. you have the right as a good citizen not to be a spectator, but be a good citizen. Come out with where you think it is wrong and let us push and make sure the right thing is done. Let me take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we'll continue and uh, I'll tell you who my second guest is. Stay right there. We're back in a moment. All right, uh, welcome back. Uh, we left off with the procurement issue, eight government agencies to face prosecution. That's according to the Public Procurement Authority. Let me get a command to wrap up. But my second guest has just uh, joined us, member of parliament for the Mian constituency, a member of the NDC, Honorable Mohamed Ablaziz is here. Good morning. Good morning, Bright. Hope you're doing great. I'm terrific. Thanks for joining us. Thank uh, you. We had taken off on procurement. Uh, come on, so the, for you, the, the point is that if there are any concerns, 
once it is brought, it can be addressed. No, like, last, like I said, you see, sole sourcing sits in our books. Procurement procedure also sits in our books. Let's not forget that sole sourcing in itself is part of the procurement procedure and the procurement laws that we have in the place. Mm. Okay? Except to add that maybe there are exceptions there because there are certain rules that you need to follow to establish why you ought to do or go by sole sourcing right. as it well. Now, the point I'm making here is that the government of the day has shown commitment and will continue showing commitment. And we promise in our manifesto as a party that whatever we do to nip this in the bud in terms of corruption, in terms of um, shortcuts in the procurement sector, we will cut it. Without a doubt, the President of the Republic, I'm making the point again, has shown commitment by appointing a minister, our deputy majority leader in parliament, to be in charge of procurement. Uh, I hope you are aware of that. And of course, it tells you that we've given you some credence. And giving you some credence, it gives you that leverage to ensure that the right thing is done. Without okay. the, I'm, I'm not surprised that these eight institutions are held before. Okay. And like I said, punishment sometime, purpose or reason is that it is to serve as a deterrent to many who may be, be engaged going into in the it. same yeah. infractions. I'm grateful. Honorable oh, 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 Ablazi, so the, the argument he is making is that it, what has just happened, eight government agencies, it, it shows government commitment to the fight against rot. Uh, Brad, good morning to you, good morning to Kamal, and good morning to our cherished uh, viewers. And sorry for stepping in late. And the people of Myanmar. And the people of Myanmar, my constituents. <laughs> <laughs> no, because he's I exiting. Can, I can imagine. No, you see, because he's I can, exiting Myanmar. I can imagine so how he excited. So he has forgotten about his people. I can imagine he's how he's exiting. Oh, oh, oh. Very soon he will be former MP of Myanmar. It is like, it just is like Mutala Mohammed. You know, I told him here. It is that a he was dream. going to be former MP. It is a okay. dream. You see, you see, you see, you see, if you claim that you uh, partly was part of the exit of oh, Mutala Mohammed you know that. from Mutala Mutala knows. Even Mutala who was behind your, your, your failure to become hey, president? Uh, uh, this is party okay, matter. Who was, was behind your failure okay, 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 to become the national youth organizer of the whole party? Let's move on. Eh? That one was a party matter, not a general election matter. Meow remains a dream. NDC is my project. I will get you out. Okay, That's my project. NDC is my project. Don't worry. All right, gentlemen, let's go on. Well, um, yeah. back to the issue that you, you table for, for, for discussion, that mm. eight government institutions have been hauled to uh, Yoko for breaches of, of the procurement law. Mm. It is um, good news. It is refreshing to hear that the PPA uh, 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 is uh, facilitating uh, these uh, uh, institutions to appear before the, 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 the Yoko. That is, that, is, that is good. But you see, when you talk about the public procurement law being passed under the MPP. Yes, it is true. Mm. But that same law was amended in 2016 under President Mahama and the NDC just to tighten the loose ends of the, of the, of the law. And talking about procurement uh, uh, breaches, I was happy when you yourself reminded him of a very classical example of the Kelney GVG. Concerns that were raised. Concerns that were raised. So and so that has so not so been so resolved so up so to so now. So oh, so oh, so oh, oh, okay, oh, don't worry, make oh, your point. oh. Take it easy that you award contract to Kelny GVG for some revenue assurance to NCA and the state. Mm? Even before they started doing the work, they were being paid about 1.4 million US dollars every month. Concerns were raised. You never paid attention to them. Why? We're in this country when the former uh, boss of a uh, uh, boss sold contaminated fuel. What? Boss. At boss. Hmm. All right? Uh, 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 sold sold hmm. contaminated fuel to unregistered companies. That is the height of the breach of the procurement law. A company that does not exist at all in a, in a legal sense, apart from the, the letterhead of, 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 of the company, it never existed. You sold contaminated fuel to them under very questionable circumstances, at prices that were, 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 were unpardonable. That is the high. So it's not just about the law. It's about how you would respect the law. And you took advantage of, 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 of my absence to talk about how, no, how, you, are here how, now, so how you guys are dealing no, with, you issues, are here now. with issues of, of You are not a threat at all. You should honestly. be the you last. You, your government should be the last group of people in this country to talk about corruption. In fact, your government defines what corruption is. You, you, you represent corruption. You should be the last to talk about If I was to list you, 
some of the corrupt deals in your government that you are aware of. I'm sure even a 24-hour stay in this city will not be enough for us. And you are aware. And so when it comes to some of these issues, let us put the partisan approach to them uh, on, 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 uh, to a stop and let's deal with the issues. We shouldn't seek to look why. Eight government agencies halt to Yoko to explain why they breached some procurement laws. And you took advantage of it to talk about your fight as against, against, against corruption. When your president has turned the Flagstaff House into a corruption clearing house, right from... Oh, your the, president? Right from... Oh, when your president? Yes, I, I oh, said really? so. A yes. member of parliament? Okay. Yes. yes. Member of parliament yes. said this? But yes. you, mean, okay. you mean the president no. of Ghana? You're on the, the exactly, but on the He's ticket of the MPP... Of okay. On the okay. ticket of the MPP, okay. President really? Mahama would not have turned the Flagstaff House into a clearing house for... Uh, uh, corrupt uh, 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 deals. And so, Kamal, you sh your group should be the last in this country to talk about corruption. Yes, when you were in opposition, you, 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 your mantra was incompetence and corruption against President Mahama in the NDC. It is true. But having been in government, having been in government for almost two years, you guys don't have the moral right again mm. Mm, to refer to any government as corrupt and incompetent because you define incompetence and corruption. Your government as an institution uh, 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 is an epitome of corruption and incompetence. And that you must, you must, you must come into terms with. And interestingly, all the allegation in respect of corruption that has bedeviled this regime has not come from the NDC, but from your own. Right from A plus to Kennedy at Japan to, uh, uh, is it Abrunya, the Brown Alpha regional uh, Really? Uh, Abrunya. Uh, Abrunya. 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 I don't know. Abrunya. 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 <laughs> Abrunya. <laughs> Abrunya. <laughs> Abrunya. <laughs> my my tree is sleeping. Come on, you're being mischievous. No, exactly. So I don't know all, the, all, the, all, the, all, the, all the all the corruption <laughs> allegations that has hit your government mm. has not come from the NDC. It came or, from Abrunya. From your own party. A very classical example being Kennedy mm -hmm. at Japan, A plus. Mm -hmm. Look, come on. You guys should be the last group in this country. No to talk about corruption okay. and incompetence. Well, uh, you see, no, I come on, let's move on. No, I, we're uh, no, moving on, no, but just no, a quick no, let's up. Okay, the then, then, respect, then 10 one. seconds. Uh, yes, of course. Let, I thought, I thought the Honorable Member of Parliament for Myung would have done justice to the subject matter on the table for us to peruse. Oh, okay. <laughs> apparently, with all respect, <laughs> he, 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 no, of course. Oh, apparently, he sought, he sought to, mm -hmm. if you like, Mention the lies of Abrunya and all those people. Well, but whether Abrunya, Abrunya, the point is, the point is, the point is, or whatever the, the point the is. case is, the guy remains no, no, one of your party no, faithful. Let, let me, a regional we, officer we, we of let, your party. I was very quiet. Okay. See, you, were quiet. Quiet. You, were you were not quiet. No, you were not quiet. You were not. You were not. You were not. You were not. Go ahead. You see, I know you are not a radical. I don't know why you are becoming a radical this morning. You see, interestingly, we have been in discipline this morning. It's a Friday. Yes, I know. Maybe it's a Friday. Yes, yes. Yeah, so let's come down and move on. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, I think that, look, this corruption fight is a huge matter. And of course, um, I would want to agree with him subtly when he says that, look, let us not try to taint it with some political colorization, party colorization. Uh, colorization. But see, when you party look, what? Uh, party, I mean, trying to <laughs> discuss, the issue, discuss the issue in political, yeah. you know, party <laughs> palace or uh, um, perspective, from the political party perspective. See, the point I want to try to make is that Clearly, there is history to this procurement law we're talking about, which I established. And when he came in, he alluded to the fact that, yes, indeed, the law was actually promulgated or enacted under the um, Kufu administration. They came in to do some certain amendments, and then maybe the loose ends were tightened and all that. Mm -hmm. I agree with him. It then goes, starts to reason that, look, clearly, any government in power at a point in time plays a role in ensuring that, indeed, we adhere to the rules or the tenets of better procurement procedures so that we could all move on. But when he starts talking about corruption, and then he mentions somewhere, and you ask him a question, he cannot even give you, where? if you like, where? Um, uh, where? Uh, detailed, where? you know, Tell me, tell me Example, what detail you want. He talked about, me. he talked about bust. Yes. And he said, certain companies which were not registered were given or sold to some products and all that. First of all, you can't call a company or you cannot say that a company is not registered and that company is in business. Of course, it's wrong. I want to tell him that it's never true. That was clear. It was established that a company that bought those products from the said institution 
was a registered company as it were. That's not true. But anyway, that's not true. That's not true. Let's move on. And Bright, and Bright, when you talk about a minister responsible for procurement, Honorable Ajua Safu, let me remind you that procurement authority, PPA, public procurement authority, falls under the finance minister. In fact, a question has been in Parliament for more than one year today for the minister to tell us how much, how much they have used the sole sourcing for. For, more, for almost more than one year, the minister has not been able to answer. I'm the Daily Guide this morning is reporting that the opposition NDC's attempt to sabotage uh, the $2 billion Chinese infrastructure financing agreement appears to have hit the snack. This is because the IMF office in Accra has said it has unable to tell whether or not the Akufuado led NPP administration's BATA agreement with Sino Hydro Corporation of China that will bring massive infrastructure development, especially in the road sector, is a loan or a BATA agreement. Daily Guide learned that the first tranche of 500 million has already hit Ghana's account to allow the commencement of various projects. Now, according to Daily Guide, the IMF said, given the complexity of the transaction, I'm unable to answer your question immediately. I have been in consultations with headquarters, including the legal department, and we're going to discuss this issue with the authorities during the upcoming seventh review mission under the extended credit facility. That's the uh, story by the Daily <sighs> Guide. The headline is NDC Hopes Dash. Honorable Aziz, let me start with you. The IMF has responded, the IMF office in Accra has responded to uh, the letter and says that. Um, it is unable to immediately uh, find an answer to whether the $2 billion uh, deal is a butter or a loan agreement. And so it is waiting to discuss the issue. Daily Guide says, NDC hopes dashed. <laughs> what do you make of it? Our hopes are not dashed. Uh, we have nothing to gain from stopping the $2 billion uh, uh, loan facility. Mm. Uh, all that we are seeking is some some clarity on the matter. Uh, remember when the uh, uh, loan agreement was brought to a parliament? It was passed by, by parliament. And so we cannot be part of a process and then tend to sabotage same. All that we are seeking to do is to bring some clarity to bear on the matter. Um, for instance, when you say you are engaged in a butter trade, uh, they are coming to do some infrastructure worth two billion US dollars. We are going to mine, refine bauxite and pay the proceeds into an escrow account and use that same amount in the escrow account to service that two billion plus interest. And you tell me this is not a loan facility. What is it? Of course, you can understand why why President Akufado and Dr. Mahmoud Baumia are unable to classify it as, as dead is because of their previous uh, posture against, against borrowing. Uh, 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 when they were in opposition, uh, a lot of, 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 of jabs were thrown at the NDC and President Mahama for borrowing. Remember even when the Minister for Finance, Mr. Kenofurata, came to Parliament somewhere in March last year to present the maiden budget of the state mm. under the MPP. He had indicated that the government debt at that time as of December 2016, was 122 billion, and that represented about 73.1 percent of uh, 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 our national GDP. It turned out to be that Mr. Ken Oforata misled the entire parliament and the, and the, and the, and the entire country. The, the, the debt stock as of December was 120 billion. That represented just 71 percent of national GDP. Today, as we speak, minus these two billion loan that they are running away from, our debt to GDP is over 72 percent. So one can understand why they are unable to classify this one as, as a loan facility. But trust me, uh, 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 you see, if we are unable to define properly what it is, mm. it would affect our calculation of our national debt. In fact, there is, there is a standard format for, for accounting for accounting for, for, for accounting for our national economy. Right. Mr. Ken Oforiata cannot suddenly change the national accounting formula in this country. It is a fact that that two billion uh, 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 infrastructure that we are going to benefit from, 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 from China 
is a loan facility. They must admit admit to that. Look, today as we speak, as at May, as at May 2018, the national debt had risen to about 154 billion Ghana cities. I can tell you that loans that were passed from June, July, before we, we went on recess, mm. would make the national debt not less than, not less than 160 billion Ghana cities. If these two billion US dollars was to be classified as dead, and we believe it is, it is dead, that would mean another 10 billion Ghana cities because at the exchange rate of almost a uh, dollar to five cities, that gives you close to 10 billion Ghana cities. And so our national debt will be hovering around 160 to 170 billion Ghana cities. And that's what, what, what they, are, they are running from. Why? I, I can get you a soft copy on my phone mm. of the agreement that they brought to Parliament for us to, to ratify. The term credit facility was used, interest rate was used. If you tell me it is not a loan facility, but it is a credit, a credit facility, it has all the features of a loan. Why? Ghana Gas, Ghana Gas Project. It was the same Chinese company that came to construct mm. the Ghana Gas project, and it was captured as part of our loan portf portfolio. So why are they running from, from, from the two billion I, I Ghana city, sorry, two billion US Dollar, dollars, dollars right. being classified as, as debt? Like I said, it is because of their previous posture about borrowing. They said they had all their money in this country when Dr. Mahmoud Baume said that he had worked at the Bank of Ghana and he's aware that we have, uh, 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 we have the money in this country, we don't need to go out and borrow. And the most worrying thing is not just the fact that the MPP is borrowing at unprecedented levels. That is not even the worry. The worry is that we cannot see what those monies are being used for. Look, tell me, Kamal is here. He should tell me if the MPP can boast of a three-classroom block that they have delivered since January 7, 2017, up to now. If they can boast of a chips compound that they have delivered. Meanwhile, you have taken billions of dollars in taxes and other revenues in this country. You have borrowed almost 170 billion. Sorry, the, the difference between 120 and 170 would give about 50 billion. Mm. You cannot point to anything. When President Mama was accused of a borrowing, at least we all saw the investments that he did into infrastructure, into our road network, into uh, uh, educational infrastructure. About 123 e blocks had been started, 50 of them commissioned. Before he left office, no. over two billion US dollars, over two billion US dollars invested into the into the health sector. Um, the University of Ghana Medical Center is a classical example. Tell me, with all the borrowings, and okay. if they were to continue on this trend, okay, wrap you up. can all tell. Right. Can I come in? Yes. If if, if, if if they were to continue on this trend, you can be sure that by the end of this year, our debt would have been around two hundred billion. If you subtract one hundred and twenty billion. From 200 billion, as it's estimated, that will be about 80 billion for two years. Just do that for another two years, and that will tell you where our national debt stock would be. I'm well, grateful. Come on. So that's that, that's the story the, yes. the, the guide has published. The guy says then this is hopes are dashed, uh, suggesting that the IMF, a crap officer, if, is unable to, to clarify. That. Very good, very good. You see, if you read the story, paragraph eight of the story as published by the Daily Guard will give you reason why the NDC is all out against this massive arrangement and agreement between us and Sino Hydro that would serve as a catalyst for infrastructure development in this country should it come to pass. The NDC is telling me today, myself and my good brother, honorable member of parliament for Myung, with interest in the northern region, that we should put aside the Sino Hydro arrangement so that <laughs> myself and my good brother and Aziz will not get Tamale interchange constructed. Is, is that what the no, NDC, no, no, the minority no, no, is saying? Please, please. I was the very quiet. Have not no, said. I, oh, please, right. I am telling you the import of this sort of agreement. <laughs> it's not an assumption. No, 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 let me continue. continue. Please, uh, please, right, right, no, right. We cannot no, allow no, 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 on that. I am saying I am, that I am the, the one NDC, in charge. You are in charge. And I'm, is a minority saying that they're against the loan or they want clarification? Oh. That's what I want you to clarify. I, I will get to the was clarification. Was it I will get to the clarification. This is the way I have decided to set off with my 
family killed okay, us. Please, 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 please. The NDC <laughs> is led by the minority leader in parliament telling us that, look, the interpretation we give to their actions and inaction okay, regarding your this one. Is that, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Please, 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 please don't. Ah, the interpretation we give to it is that <laughs> my good brother, Honorable Aziz, and myself, and in fact, with the greatest respect to my minority leader, I mean, to our minority leader in parliament, my, my MP for Tamale South, Haruna Idrisu, what they are telling us is that impliedly, we don't deserve an interchange at point seven in Tamale. What they are telling us is that the Wulugu person per road Will not it's not supposed to be constructed. What they are telling is that the Wa Central Township roads will not be. The Sunyani Inner Circle roads will not be. I am giving you the phase one of the projects that has been earmarked mm. with 500 million whooping dollars that we're going to use to have an infrastructure drive in this country. You know, this country has a history. Prior to the coming to office of uh, His Excellency John Ajikum Kufuor in 2000, when he was sworn in 2001 on January 7th, he said, he said, look, Ghana needs a facelift. By the time he left office, when you move from circle and driving to Achimota barrier or Fanko barrier, before he came in, you would have used five hours to get there. By the time he left office, wide expansion of the road, infrastructure drive. By the time he left office, Techimai Kumasi Road constructed. By the time he left office, Kumasi Accra Road giving a facelift, massive infrastructure. Again, MPP has come to power. MPP says, look, we will sit down. This country has a deficit of over $30 billion in infrastructure de delivery. We have some box size sitting there. Which you wanted a Ghanaian company, if you like, let's give it to one person to go mine. Then we said, no, let us go into an arrangement. The IMF program which you have plunged us into. You are the same person who took it to IMF anyway, remember? Are you there or not? I'm coming. Are you there the, or not? The, the IMF program the which extended into credit facility certain, program. Oh, let me learn. No, come on. Please, please. No, no, no. I, I, I no, am no, almost done. Even before please, you proceed. Please, I want the please, extended let's have credit facility no. program with IMF. Don't do this to this have presentation, you exited? please. Uh, I am saying that let, uh, let uh, the uh, people uh, watching us listen. The IMF, the IMF with the same government, the incompetent and wobbling government that we have actually shown exit, took us to gave us certain conditionalities that look we cannot go past this particular level in terms of going in for debt and all that we are mindful mm -hmm. of the fact that is why the sino hydro arrangement is not alone and we maintain it's not alone that is the center of uh, the discussion now we said let's go into a better arrangement we have certain resources there we are not we have not tapped into it the Chinese have got certain, if you like, progress to go into it. Let's arrange with them. Come take our bauxite. In return, we need infrastructure worth over two billion to make sure our economy is giving a boost. Are they coming then for you bauxite? tell me. Are they coming for bauxite? Then you tell me. Wait a no. minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are they coming for bauxite or cash? Come on. What makes it a, 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 a better uh, uh, agreement? Why? Why is it not a better agreement? At the end of the day, uh, why? the argument is that the there product is, that uh, comes out of bauxite there's is what? There's management is fee. Wait a minute. There's, uh, I'm uh, saying transaction that. fee and all that. Interest, and so interest, I, I just interest. wanted to so see suggestion if, if is you that had if given you me the, if you had given me mm. the time without these interjections, mm. we would have just landed and you because understand. Because I'm not making sense. Uh, I'm making okay. Because we're not making sense. Listen to me. Please, oh, please. Uh, uh, don't please. disrupt You see, don't do this. Why you do this? People, you are a member of parliament. You know that. That's part one, of course. That's part one, of course. So you see, I'm saying that. What I'm saying is that. What I'm saying is that. Please, right. Let's 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 get this clear. I'm saying that we have some bauxite that we need to mine. Mm. The arrangement with Sino Hydro is that bauxite will be mined. At the end of the day, we'll pay them back with some aluminium out of the bauxite. Hey. That's clear. Okay. Of course, in the arrangement. And we are now saying that, look, this is not a loan, as they argue. Why is it not a loan? It is some sort of a better arrangement that we do have, that we need infrastructure. And the infrastructure we need is worth $2 billion. And these are the infrastructure, uh, the kind of infrastructure we need. These are the areas we want these things constructed. Like I cited the Tamale, cited the blah, 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 and we all well. Then they also agreed. Then we came into force. Then you sat in parliament, took a paper, and wrote a letter through your minority leader to the IMF office in Ghana. 
For that is why I now come for clarification. Okay, so when you read the story again, I'm touching on that one now. That is why you see, I want you to understand. You should give a background to where we are. Did they write? Let the IMF understand. To stop the loan. When they wrote, oh, no, 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 that's what right. I want you to to, to, to right, explain. right, 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 right. Yes. They wrote to IMF uh -huh. seeking clarification as okay. to whether or not okay. the actions of government in going into the agreement with Sino Hydro amounts to actually going in for direct debts. I mean, uh, uh, if you like, uh, loans. Okay. Then the IMF, listen to the response. Mm. IMF says that, technically speaking, the memorandum of understanding that we have used or we have reached with the government of Ghana, within the context of what arrangement we had, nothing has been breached so far. Clearly, read it well. Oh, Nothing oh, is breach, oh, oh, and no therefore, oh, oh, given oh, the complexity, oh, oh, right. need, wait, need, let me learn, need, that need, given the complexity and given the complex nature of the agreement or the arrangement between Sino Hydro and then, uh, if you like, Ghana, Ghana. Do, they are in talk with their headquarters to establish whether or not it's a loan or, or it's not a, a loan. Agreement. So clearly, I tell you here that they have been deflated, <laughs> they have been pushed down, they have been told that what you are thinking is not what it is. They have told you that the conditionalities that we have set aside has never been what? You know, uh, violated or breached. That you have been told. You sit here today and you want to tell a different story. You see, it's very sad the way the minority go. You see what their fear is? Their fear is that should the two billion worth of infrastructure is put in place. That's the fear of NDC. And I want Ghanaians to listen. The Ghanaians who voted you out know very well. They want a government that will come and give them massive development. Their fear is that if there's a catalyst, okay, if this serves as a catalyst for infrastructure development in this country, mm -hmm. there will be something to point at by the MPP once again. And that would get them crumbling. And that will get them hiding in the 2020 right, election that's that they okay, cannot that's show. All right. Eight years where they did nothing to us. Right. Just, 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 that's what we are talking about. Just, 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 just one minute. You don't have nothing just, to say. Just one minute. Quickly. You address the just, issue. Just one minute. No, what what oh, is just one minute? Come on. You, you didn't come allow on. me to flow. Uh, and you are telling me I should not allow you to flow. Come on. When you when you talk about When you talk about 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 IMFGL, you have been in power for one year. Eight months today. Have you exited from the IMF deal? You have rather, you have rather Governance extended. Governance is the concern. No, it's a continuity. No, 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 no. no. Okay. We have rather, no. Like we have, is no. Because of time, we have rather, rather, less like you. We have rather, rather extended that. our extended. Uh, Governance is the going concern. We have extended we are not that facility like you, with please. IMF. Mm. That is a matter of public record. Now, when you talk about the response of 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 of, of, the of IMF. IMF. Come on, read the story. You can't mislead us. Ah, and I read the story than you. Uh, the IMF, IMF has not read the story. story. Come on, come on, come on. The IMF, IMF let us work. Come on, please. Please allow Abdullah to, to, to make, make his oh, submission so that as you were IMF coming. has not indicated in any way in their letter mm -hmm. that it is not a loan facility and no, that it does not say so. And that it does not bring me. Oh, no, he was hearing me. And that it does not breach. Come on, come on. You are lying. Be a gentleman this morning. I am. I am, you are Be not. discipline. Be discipline. <laughs> they have not indicated anywhere in I their response mm, mm. that you have not breached the terms and conditions under extended credit facility oh, program. Because that is said so. All that they have told you, all that they have told you is that, all that they have told you, this is the delegate. Uh -uh. No, uh, it's a quotation. Uh, uh, no, no, and I can read please, the have told please don't get distracted. What they have Just told you, on, what they have told you is that progress. Mm. they require some time to be able to determine mm. whether it is a loan facility or not. But, Brian, why should we argue about this thing? Who doesn't know what butter trade is? Who doesn't know what butter trade is? All level economics will tell you, if you study economics, at, at, at the at the at the secondary school, you should know. We are talking modern trends. That better trade, trade, better, better trade, trade. We are talking better modern trade, trends, not better trade. 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 Better refine it right sell it put the money into an escrow account and use that process to pay for it what, 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 what so, so, the money oh so even if you and go when to they go, were paying the first round of money, was money you or they brought you in don't even appreciate the details of well. the story but so so the chinese are not taking no they are not taking box side okay 
who would mine the bauxite, right. refine the bauxite, sell the bauxite, pay into an escrow account, and use the proceeds to service that two billion US dollars with interest. With interest. There are transaction fees, management fees, and what have you. I Even when you I'm, read listen. When you read the memo that came to Parliament, and, and these are characteristics the terms, of a, a loan. It's a loan facility. Oh, no, no, but Kamal has told no, you. Well, no. that, Kamal has told you. Kamal has told you. Kamal has told you why they don't I'll want to classify it as a loan. You know why? Under the terms and conditions of the external credit, credit facility with IMF, mm. they cannot go beyond 500 million US dollars, right? So, in order to be able to go around, they are saying it is a butter agreement, butter arrangement. And not enough. Right, That's the main reason. Right. We've been in power for right. almost two years. Right. Exit from IMF. Right. <laughs> okay. right. Please. Exit let from us, IMF. Let us. Let us. Let us. Let us. My, my friend right. is made. Right. 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 <laughs> right. You have this. You, you have. Hey. You have some money sitting in your, your account. Today. Okay. I have this phone here. And Kamal is telling me. You tell me that this phone. Should I get it? I would like it. Okay. But it should come in this form. Then I say, okay, I'll give you this phone. But it's going to go through here and then get back. Through to where? I also use the phone. Through where? You send the phone and pay. I will send the phone and pay. All right. You see, I'm going to trust you. I don't understand. Have a restful weekend. I'm sure. We have done nothing to Very soon, very soon, former MP from them. That is your dream. Kawadi now belies a member of the NPP. Honorable Ablaziz is a member of the NDC, member of Parliament for Myanmar. Have a wonderful weekend, yes, and uh, I'm sure you will see you next week. Stay with us, sports comes up after this. Lily Rose toothbrushes have good quality, long-lasting bristles, which are very effective in removing food particles from your teeth and gums. For strong teeth and healthy gums, brush daily with a Lily Rose toothbrush. Lily Rose toothbrushes are available in shops all over Ghana. Lily Rose cleans best. Take good care of your teeth. Always use a Lily Rose toothbrush. Call on 0207-999-181 or 0207-999-9180. Just